Today we take a closer look at the Prusa Mini. Hello everyone, Chris here back in the basement after summer break and there isn't a better way to start this season than taking a look at the Prusa Mini. So let's get the boring stuff out of the way first. The Prusa Mini is a cantilever style 3D printer from Prusa Research out of the Czech Republic. It has an 18 centimeter cubed build volume, a heated bed with removable steel sheets, you can get smooth PEI and powder coated, it has a 3 to 1 gear ratio extruder feeder that's a Bowden setup that goes into their custom hot end that can reach 280C. They have also introduced a custom 32-bit board, it has an Ethernet interface, silent stepper drivers, and they have a color screen with a click wheel. It also has auto bed leveling with an inductive sensor. Now there really isn't a long list of pros and cons for this machine in my opinion. It is a very sound machine, especially for the price tag of $350 US. But we are going to take a look around, look at some of the features that I like and how to use them, and maybe check out a few things that I would change on my printer. So let's not waste any time, and let's take a look at this thing. For the Mini, Prusa has stuck with their RepRap roots. You can 3D print a lot of parts for the Mini on another 3D printer, including some of the integral ones like the smooth rod holders here in the front and the back, which is something on a 3D printer that I do enjoy seeing. One of the biggest advantages introduced on the Prusa Mark III were these removable steel sheets, and that has been carried over to the Mini. You can get extra sheets for an additional cost like this powder coated one. I recommend powder coated for things like PETG and flexibles, or these PEI smooth coated ones for things like PLA. And here's a thermal shot of the bed at 85C. The corners are just a little bit cooler, maybe about a 10 degree drop in the printable area down in the corner. Nothing too much to worry about, just remember the larger the item, probably the higher the bed heat you're going to need. And as I've stated before, Prusa has gone with a custom hot end setup for the Mini. You now have this custom heat sink that has a 40 millimeter fan to cool it off. Housed inside is the throat or barrel, and you have your custom heat block. The good news is all these items are compatible with E3D, like the V6 that's on the Mark III. So it is possible to interchange some parts if you can't get the custom ones from Prusa. And as I stated before, the hot end is fed with a Bowden style extruder, but the PTFE tube doesn't go all the way down into the hot zone. So that's how you're enabled to print up to 280C. And I have to say, this one does print ASA at around 260 really well. You have your ABL inductive sensor here on the left side and your part cooling around the back. And that brings us to the extruder feeder. Now you'll notice that I do have a switch on the back of my feeder this is an added filament runout sensor that you can purchase for a few extra dollars. I'm somewhat hit and miss on filament runout. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, but I do have it configured on the Mini, and it seems to work okay. But you'll notice the feeder of the extruder is completely encased in plastic, and there's really not a lot of areas where you can service it. So if you need to clean it out, you are going to have to take this apart, which shouldn't be a huge deal. You do have this door on top, so at least you can see what's going on inside. You can at least check to see if the teeth need some cleaning, but you're really not gonna be able to get a lot of work done in just this little door. So far, I haven't had any issues, and I've got quite a few hours of print time on this one. And something else I wanted to mention while we're talking about Bowden extruder setups are these brass couplers they've decided to use on this machine. These are traditional brass fittings that you would see on things like water lines. If you take the top collar off, you'll notice around the PTFE tube, you'll have this compression brass bead. So when you put the collar back on, it compresses that bead and keeps a really tight hold on the PTFE without distorting it. That, in my opinion, compared to the push couplers, is a real bonus for the Prusa Mini. You won't have any issues with the PTFE pulling itself out. And while we're in this neighborhood, you might have also noticed but the Prusa Mini also utilizes a single start lead screw, and that's going to give you a lot higher resolution on your Z-axis. A little bit slower maybe, definitely more precise, and more functionally compatible with different layer heights. They're also using two 10 millimeter smooth rods to make sure that that cantilever arm stays nice and level during the print. 
And that brings me to the Mini's color screen. It is a nice interface. You still have the click wheel, so there is no touch screen here, but it's easy to move around, easy to find options. We can take a look at settings. You still have all these same adjustments that you're gonna see on a lot of the other printers. And in calibration, you can even still adjust the first layer height, the Z offset, in case you need just a little bit more squish when you're switching out to different surfaces or materials as well as you can run the first layer calculator to help dial that in. If we take a look at info, we can go into version info, and you'll notice we are on firmware 405. And that's the first spot in this video where I'm gonna stop and say that Prusa has done a really nice job. They're always really up to date on their firmware. They're constantly developing new features. I know I've upgraded the mini at least once already, and I'm due for another upgrade. And with this new 32-bit buddy board, it is really easy to update. So let's just walk through that real quick. You just remove your Prusa provided USB thumb drive and mount it on your computer. You head to prusa3d.com, head over to support, drivers, firmware, and manuals, scroll down to the mini, and hit download on their newest firmware. This one came out on August 5th. We'll head to downloads, we'll unzip our file, and we'll right click and copy this BBF file put it on our thumb drive, mount your thumb drive back on your printer, power off, and then power on, and your printer will know there is new firmware on your thumb drive. You can flash it or skip it, so we're gonna go ahead and flash. The flashing process will begin. We'll reselect our language, but now the firmware upgrade is complete. It can't get much simpler than that. Your screen is also adjustable a bit back and forth if you'd like to adjust the position. And as I mentioned before, it does have all of the creature comforts of the previous machines, including auto bed leveling. Oh, and before I forget, you do get an example of the part that you will be printing on the screen before you print it. And you may not think that that's a very handy feature, but I have to tell you, it's been a lot handier than I thought it ever would be. Being able to see exactly what the part looks like before you hit start, pretty convenient. So the Mini does definitely have all the skills to pay said bills, but a lot of people always ask, are these printers quiet? Well. So yes, it's quiet. It doesn't even hit 50 decibels, and that's with the print fan at 100%. And that's a lot due to the TMC2209 stepper drivers that are integrated on this board. And speaking of the 32-bit buddy board, let's have a look. And as always, it's going to be a little hard to see because of all the wires in the way. But over here towards the front of the machine, you have all your TMC2209 stepper drivers. In the middle, you have your ARM chip. It is an STM32F407. And something interesting to note if you're looking around in here is this header right here. That looks awful familiar and probably will support some sort of Wi-Fi module as features are released down the road. So I'm pretty excited for that as well. Pretty much everything else is standard fare on a board of this caliber that you would expect on a Prusa machine. I do also think that it's important to note that the Prusa does have a power brick. Sometimes you probably don't expect 3D printers to have these or be able to utilize them, but this is a Meanwell power supply. It's 24 volt at 6.67 amp, 160 watt, which should be more than enough to power the Mini. So that's pretty much a complete rundown of all the features on the printer that I wanted to mention, and I only had a few issues while testing this machine, and there's a couple of things that I would have changed. The first one being the original menu setup. It seemed kind of clunky and hard to find things, and a lot of the features I thought would be there weren't, but that has all been corrected in the newer firmware versions. And I have to mention the spool holder. The spool holder that comes with this mini is the roller skate type. It just has four bearings. It is adjustable side to side, so you can use larger spools, and it does have some foam feet on it that keeps it from sliding around. And your filament just sets in here like this. It does spin freely and work as designed. 
but it is just one more thing that you have to move while moving the printer. It's not attached, and it does kind of have to set behind the printer to be able for it to work well. So it's something you need to plan for when you're finding a spot to put your mini. And I really can't say anything bad about the holder, but it's just not my favorite design. But in all fairness, I've really never found a printer that came with a stock spool holder that I liked. I always had to find some other solution. So take that for what it's worth. And the only real issue I had while testing was with the hot end. I was printing some PETG, it was the first time I had increased the temperature that high, and I noticed that my first layer wasn't quite right. So I adjusted the first layer height, I tested again, it was going fine, and then I noticed it started to drag again, and it even knocked the model off the print bed. And looking at it further, since I went to that higher temp, the barrel inside of this heat sink had gotten loose. These three set screws loosened up and the nozzle was actually falling. The fix was pretty easy. I heated the nozzle up to about 270. I backed the set screws out, pushed the heat block up and the barrel as far as it would go, and then tightened them back down. I only had to deal with that once and it's been working great ever since. So if that's an issue that you're seeing, definitely take a look and make sure that your heat block and your barrel aren't moving around. So that's it, right? Everything you need to know about the Prusa Mini. Oh, but I forgot one thing. How does it print? Well, I've been printing on the Mini a lot. I've also been doing a lot of functional prints, and I don't have any of those to show you because I'm using them for their functions somewhere else in the house, I'm sure. But I do have some that you need to see. And here they are. And I was having so much fun with the Mini, I actually got just a little bit carried away and probably printed too many things. I even printed all of the test models that came on the flash drive. But let's take a look at a few of these. First, let's have a look at the Maker's Muse Tolerance test. Yep, the Mini got them all. So tolerance, not an issue on this one. The nut and bolt that comes on the SD card, very nice print, fits really well. Again with Maker's Muse, here is the Lattice Cube Torture Test. There are a few strings here and there, but it came out very, very nice. First try, no problem. And I can't test a printer nowadays without maybe a Yoda here and there, a couple of Solaris a lot, and some Jessies, just for good measure. And as always, tried and true, Adelinda. If you zoom in, you can see just how good the layer quality is. I did do a lot of the functional prints in PETG that I don't have here on the table, but I did want to do a larger one in PETG. This is Green Gates Red. Old Spider-Man's looking pretty good. And I wanted to give some higher temp a try. This is ASA. I did use my Wham Bam enclosure on the Mini. This is the part fan for my rail core. There were some supports there that I took off. But this is Prusa Mint Galaxy Black ASA. I believe that's what it's called. And it came out fantastic. I printed it at 260C, no issues whatsoever. So for print quality, you're not gonna have any problems there. It prints great. And I don't usually like to compare printer to printer during a review, but this is Prusa, and they have a knack for building printers. So I have to compare the Mini to the Mark III. So I printed the same model, same filament, just to have a look-see. And this is a side-by-side -side of Wexter's Orc. One is done on the Mark III, one is done on the Mini. Can you tell which one is which? I have to say, it's pretty hard unless you look really close. And most of the items where you can tell which one is which is involved in part cooling. The Mark III just has a little bit better cooling still than the Mini. But it is very marginal. This is the Mark III print. If you look at the fine details, especially things like his ear right here, and then you compare that to the Mini print, you can see there are a few strings in there, which is pretty obvious but the Mark III feature is just a little bit sharper. Same things if you take a look at the horns on his armor. This is the Mark III, and there's the Mini. Just a little sharper print. But again, the Mini definitely holds its own. So you've seen the printer, all of its features, its price tag, and how it prints, but that's not all the things that I could mention here. In most Prusa reviews, I would mention their ecosystem. 
They make the filament, they develop the slicer continuously, they provide all the profiles for all of their printers. In fact, in the mini profile, there's things I like in it better than the one for the Mark III. For example, it cools the nozzle down by default before it does its probing, so you don't ooze on the bed. When the probing's done, it goes back up to printing temp and starts printing. Just little things like that that Prusa is integrating. And there's one more thing I want to discuss before we go about the Mini, and that's how it integrates with Octoprint. When you connect up with Octoprint, the Mini goes into Octoprint mode, locking out a lot of features. Now before, in previous firmware versions, you had a lot less control when using Octoprint on your Mini, but they've sorted a lot of that out. Even on printers like the Mark III, you have a lot of diminished controls on your LCD when you're connected with Octoprint. But now with the Mini, you get the Octoprint icon telling you you are in Octoprint mode. You do have pause and stop features, and you can still tweak things like nozzle and bed temp, print fan, and your live Z adjust. Again, just in case your first layer isn't quite right. So you still have the lockout when Octoprint is in control to keep you from duplicating efforts, commands here and there. But with the newer firmware versions, have regained a lot more control that you're going to need at the front of the machine if something bad happens. Or you need to make a quick adjustment. There will be more development on this feature going forward, I am sure. So that does finally bring us to the end of our Prusa Mini review. But there is one question that I like to answer on all the review videos, and that is, would I buy this printer again? And the answer for the Prusa Mini is yes. In fact, I'd buy it twice. And there is some logic for this. If you can deal with an 18cm3 build volume, you don't need something bigger. The Prusa Mark III is $750 US for the kit, and it takes me around 6-7 to seven hours to assemble one. The Mini is only $350 US, and it assembles in minutes, and you're ready to start printing. You can see the process that we did during the live stream of the Mini assembly. So if you got two Minis, you would be printing twice as fast for less money, and you'd have more productivity because of it. And with the LAN features and hopefully Wi-Fi features coming up, it should be a lot easier to use things like farm software, to make it more integrated in your workflow. Just something to consider when you're looking at buying a new printer or multiple printers. And I think I've said enough over the last three years that I wanted you to like and subscribe to my channel, so we're not going to say that on this season. We're just going to say I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you very soon.